All right, today we're taking a look at what in physics is referred to as a ballistic pendulum, which consists of a projectile, in this case a dart, that's fired horizontally into a block on the end of a string. And when this dart collides with the block, it's going to stick in the block, and the two objects are going to swing upward on the end of this string. And in this video, we're going to solve for the velocity of the dart and block immediately after the collision, as well as the kinetic energy lost in the collision, the increase in height of the dart and block as they swing upward, and the maximum angle the string will reach relative to the vertical. Now this problem is centered around two quantities that are discussed in physics, momentum and energy, and it uses both. But the hard part of this problem is knowing when to use momentum and when to use energy. Now when two objects collide like this dart and block, linear momentum is conserved. That is to say it doesn't change. Now in physics, we use the letter P for momentum. So I'm going to set the initial momentum, let's call that PI, equal to the final momentum, PF. Now the linear momentum of a single object is given by the equation P equals MV. But here we have two objects, the dart and the block. So the total momentum before the collision is going to be the sum of the two individual momenta. That is mv for one object plus mv for the other object. And we have a similar function for the final momentum. Now in the problem it's stated that our one kilogram dart is moving along at an initial velocity of 10 meters per second when it strikes the stationary block. So plugging both the mass and velocity in for our dart up here as well as for our block. We can set that equal to the final momentum of our system, that is the dart and the block. Now the important thing to recognize up here is that when the dart strikes the block and they move off and swinging on the end of the string over here, they're going to have the same final velocity. So rather than talking about two different final velocities, we're going to be able to factor out this velocity here. So we're just left with this expression. And solving for that velocity, we get the velocity of the dart in the block just after this collision is 2.5 meters per second. So now knowing the velocity of the dart and block just after the collision, let's go through and solve for the kinetic energy that was lost when the dart collided with the block. See, mathematically we can express the energy lost in the collision as the change in kinetic energy, and change just being a final value minus an initial value. Now kinetic energy is given by the equation one half mass times velocity squared. So this dart before it struck the block had some kinetic energy. And after the dart becomes embedded in the block, both the dart and block moving together are also going to have kinetic energy. Now we already solved for the velocity of the dart and block immediately after this collision. That's what we're calling the final velocity over here. So our change in kinetic energy is going to be one half times four. That's the sum of these two masses because that's how much mass is moving after the collision and that mass is moving along at two and a half meters per second. Now before the collision, we had just the dart moving along at 10 meters per second, and the block wasn't moving at all, so you'll see that had zero kinetic energy, meaning our total change in kinetic energy was negative 37.5 joules. It's negative because there was a loss of energy. Now technically, if we're looking for a loss of energy, we'd represent this result as a positive value. So after this dart strikes the block, the two objects are going to swing backwards. And as they swing backwards, we don't have a collision occurring, but what we have really is the conservation of mechanical energy. Ultimately, what's going to happen is the kinetic energy, which this system or our dart and block possesses here, is going to turn into gravitational potential energy as the dart and block swing upward and gain height. So up here we can set the kinetic energy just after this collision equal to the gravitational potential energy when the block reaches its maximum height. Now some people refer to this as GPE for gravitational potential energy. In other texts you'll see it written as U sub G. They both mean the same thing and they're calculated the same way. So what we're going to do here is just set the kinetic energy one half mv squared equal to mgh. The total mass multiplied by g the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by h the height which the dart and block are going to gain as they swing upward. Now one of the things we have to be careful with here is people think back to the last problem and say to themselves, well, if the 
dart and block lost 37 joules of kinetic energy, that must be what turned into potential. But it's not. Realize, that 37 joules that were lost, that was lost to heat and friction and deforming the dart or the block. That's energy that's gone from the system. It's whatever kinetic energy wasn't lost that's going to turn into potential here. So looking over here, we're going to have 1 half times 4. Again, that's the total mass which is swinging upward, multiplied by the velocity of the dart and block just after this collision, which is 2.5 meters per second, and that's squared. We're going to set that equal to the total mass, still 4, multiplied by 9.8 times h. And working this out, we find that h, the increase in height of the dart and block as they swing upward, is 0.32 meters. So now knowing this change in height of the dart and block, we can solve for the angle which the string is going to make relative to the vertical axis. Now this comes down to being nothing more than a geometry problem. You see, when the block is hanging down at its very lowest point in its swing here, the distance from the pivot point to the block is L, the length of the string, which in this case is 4 meters. And when the dart and block swing backwards, the length of the string doesn't change. This is still 4 meters here. But if you look at this with respect to this angle right here, and you view what's going on here as being a large right triangle, this dimension right here is actually L cosine theta because it's the adjacent side of this right triangle. Realize h, the distance from here to here, plus this dimension right here, L cosine theta, is equal to L, the total length of this string. Or you could say h, the height, is equal to L minus L cosine theta. Now we already know the height, we just solved for that, it's 0.32 meters. And we know the length of this string, so subbing in our values, we find the maximum angle the string is going to reach relative to vertical is 23 degrees. Now in this problem you'll notice we didn't worry about the size or dimensions of either the dart or the block. If we were to pull those dimensions into this problem that would complicate things, which goes beyond the scope of what most people out there are really looking for when searching for this problem. But we'll cover that some other time. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.